This is the Hello World Podcast. What was that trigger? What was that uh, push, big push that led you and Carlos really go and say, let's start Cajon.ph? Well, I actually had known of the business model back by around 2013. I saw it in New York and in San Francisco. So I, I knew enough about real estate that this is something that would work here. Um, but I don't know anything about logistics and warehousing. So I sat on the idea for some time. And then in 2016, I bumped into Carlos in Belair. I was getting burnt out in corporate. And when I talked to him, I realized where he was telling me about how his family business is logistics and storage, and they've been doing it for 40 years. And he had the same vision as what I had seen um, just on the storage side. He wanted to innovate a traditional model that's been working over time and kind of make it digitize. On my end, I knew that space was a luxury and this is something that we could market and, and create. And so from there, you know, it was it was it started off as sort of drunken talk and then it developed into something real as we kind of talked about it some more and some more. Literally our wives thought it wasn't going to lead to anything. And then, you know, we just became more obsessed with it. And and then it got to a point where I met his family. I uh, went to the warehouse and we were able to convince them to give us a 20 square meter room in one of their warehouses to prove the concept. You started and, with a 20 you know, square behold, meter room. Yeah, started there and to date we're at, you know, over 2000 square meters managed already. Um so that's over that's like seven facilities. Um so you know the growth has been tremendous and it's really when we saw that room fill up that Carlos and I were like, okay, yeah, this this isn't a part-time thing. This is something that we can do. Let's go all in. And so, you know, that's when we really got things going. We, we you know, that, at the time I was working for Rockwell. So I, I resigned from Rockwell to kind of just go all in on this one. And that's really what was the turning point for us. Let's, you know, let's, let's invest our time and our effort here and see if we can really make a startup that will make a difference or that will really last. So you did not know Carlos before. I suppose you just you said you bumped into each other in Baler uh, on a surfing uh, uh, vacation. Yeah, it was I a suppose. surf trip, but we knew each other from Ateneo. So we were both from Ateneo. Um, mm-hmm. We had common friends, but we weren't. We 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 hadn't really had any real discussion over you know what do we do for a living. So it had been some time, and we weren't really close. But you know that one meeting got you know had the snowball going. It had us really discussing things and, and that's what you know what led to to Kohan now again the topic is the, the story of a startup uh, entrepreneur and take a look at this addressing our listeners in uh, this episode um, you you don't expect it you meet somebody who may just compliment is that uh, the best way to put it Nick right the yes. best person who may compliment yes. you had that idea right you don't know how to articulate it or execute yeah. it here comes along in that uh, you know kilometers away from where you you may have yeah. first met in Ateneo, where the idea of this uh, the idea has been born, and two people just you know, managed to synergize uh, two st- strengths. So, um, and yeah. you know, Nick, just sharing in a workshop that I was delivering three weeks ago, I was talking about in a book of Jim Collins. You know, Jim Collins is the author of Good to Great. And he was talking about mm-hmm. yeah. fire bullets first. Fire bullets first before cannonballs. Innovative companies are not necessarily successful because they're innovative. They fire a bullet first. They pilot an experiment. They don't dive into it with all of their resources. And when it succeeds, that they, they scale it. And when you're talking about that story, yes. Nick, 20 square foot uh, meter space, now to 2,000, just reminded me again that great companies know how to scale and to be creative. They they, they are creative and innovative, but in a disciplined manner. So I just somehow yeah. felt that when you were talking about you started first and then. Yeah, I mean, it was really something that Carlos, we don't we didn't have a lot of capital or or anything, right? We had the effort that we could put into it. And so we really tried to, till now, we've remained super asset light. 
Um, and, you know, that's allowed us to, to really kind of pivot and study and, and, you know, do the right things. And so building a minimum viable product, proving that it works um, and that there's a potential market for it rather than just going all in for the sake of it, um, I guess, really guided us and kind of formed our the way we want to run the company and the way we want to move forward with, with you know, storage as a solution, really. Hi, this is Louis Banta, CEO and Chief Consultant of LJMB or Learning Just Made Better. Thanks for watching my video. To get more videos like this, click subscribe and hit the bell icon below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, and share this to others.